This video is brought to you by the good folks at KEH. Not only is KEH the oldest and biggest at what they do, buying and selling exclusively used camera gear of all sorts since 1979, but they do it well with integrity and both a 180-day warranty and 21-day return policy, free shipping on transactions over 49 bucks. Which is why, because they make it as futz-free a process as possible, they are our go-to whenever we are looking to fund new purchases by selling our own gear or buying that special used piece of kit properly graded and checked when we want to go quirky or old school. Check them out using the special links and 5% discount or bonus code in the video description below. Thank you, KEH. Two other notes during this silly season of holiday cheer. First, get 10% off site-wide for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Just be sure to use the code TBM10A at checkout. Second, share your gear wish list for a chance to win a $500 KEH gift card. Link to the giveaway details down below as well. Happy holidays and happy hunting. When you cut through all the caveats, a lens performance at minimum focusing distance, for example, is invariably different than it is at infinity, or pixel peeping is not a valid proxy for evaluating an image's gestalt, if you will, in the real world as it was intended by the photographer. An MTF chart from one company is not the same as one from another. The validity of perceptual megapixels, blah, 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 copy variation, yada, yada, yada. One thing becomes clear. Sigma's Diminutive, $550. Dedicated APS-C coverage, 18 to 52.8 in X-mount. Is a match for Fujifilm's literally twice the price, vaunted XF-16 to 55 2.8 red badge zoom, lack of lens IS on both, eliminating image stabilization as a consideration for either. But with this said, that's both a good thing and a bad thing. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and I will try to make this brief. First, as I just said, Sigma's 18 to 52.8, a tiny, lightweight, dust and splash proof, keenly priced but utterly anodyne in appearance and feel dedicated crop sensor zoom, offering a field of view and depth of field equivalent to a full frame 27 to 75 millimeter f4 is on par with or better than, from image quality and autofocus perspectives, Fujifilm's brilliant, slightly wider at the bottom end, slightly narrower at the top end, much nicer to look at and manipulate $1,100 Holy Trinity XF16-55 2.8 red badge zoom, which as a red badge optic is the appellation for Fujifilm's highest performance XF glass. I will get into the details, so hold that thought. Second, this is a very good thing depending upon one's vantage point. Fujifilm, like Sony, Nikon, Panasonic, Sigma, and Leica, but unlike Canon, has opened its lens mount to independent lens manufacturers, making the joy of shooting with Fujifilm cameras accessible to more of us, and at least in this case, at no net loss in image quality. Really, really, I'll get into it, continue holding that thought. But third, and this is a kick in the head for Fujifilm. And someone like me, neither lens is as good as the best 24 to 70 zooms in the full frame segment. Fujifilm still doesn't have a standard zoom that can match full frame lenses for shallowest depth of field. And with Fujifilm's newest 40 megapixel sensor, which is what I use for testing these lenses, and two others hold that thought, these gaps have become more obvious. In other words, the one lens within the XF lineup that I own, the one I couldn't bring myself to sell even after I'd sold my Fujifilm cameras because it is an absolute favorite of mine, is simply no longer competitive on the most performant Fujifilm X-mount bodies with the most performant full-frame competitors. If the highest level of image quality is what you need or want. Hold that thought too. My testing also revealed that Fujifilm is addressing the fact, really, that their XF line is in need of across-the-board upgrades made manifest when I threw the older XF23 1.4R into the mix, superseded by the recently released XF23mm 1.4R LMWR, 
And the Little Sigma Zoom at the same focal length demonstrated superior image quality to this older but staple XF Prime. But their next generation 18mm 1.4 RLMWR was better than all of them. So, yeah, let's get into it. Across dozens of images at 18 millimeters, 23 millimeters, 50 millimeters, and at every full f-stop from 2.8 to f8 on the Sigma 18 to 50 and Fujifilm 16 to 55 2.8, and at 18 millimeters and 23 millimeters respectively on the older 23 1.4R and the new 18 1.4R LMWR at every full stop from 1.4 to f8, and in full recognition of the caveats I outlined at the outset, the essence of what I found was this. One, both lenses were well corrected for focus breathing at the fields of view and distances at which this would be relevant for what we do. Two, both lenses had smooth and quiet video autofocus performance here in the Batcave. In fact, I'm shooting this episode with the Sigma on an X-H2 right now, so see what I mean? Three, the XF 16 to 55 2.8 generally had better chromatic aberration correction across focal length and aperture down to, you know, whatever it is, 5, 6, or F8, than the Sigma. But four, the Sigma consistently edged out the Fujifilm for contrast in backlit situations. Five, the Fujifilm and Sigma traded places for sharpness across focal lengths and center versus edge of frame. But here's the thing about that. Sometimes the Sigma was notably sharper than the Fujifilm. Other times, the Fujifilm was marginally sharper than Sigma. Six, that the Sigma accomplished this in a dramatically smaller, lighter, and far less expensive package, without giving up dust or splash resistance, made the Sigma's performance all the more noteworthy. Seven, in fact, the Sigma Zoom was dramatically sharper and contrastier than Fujifilm's older 23 1.4R Prime at 2.8, far better corrected for chromatic aberration as well. 8. With this said, the new 18 1.4 RLMWR at approximately the same field of view as the others was, as one would hope, next generation better optically than all of them. A good thing, because I'd assert that the 18 1.4's performance is the minimally acceptable standard if Fujifilm's APS-C lineup is to be thoroughly competitive with full frame which it had been more or less up until 2018 when Nikon, Panasonic, Sigma, and Canon entered the fray with the benefit of the latest optical designs, latest sensors, advances in manufacturing and material science, and higher resolution sensors at that. I'll wrap it up this way. Sigma's 18 to 52.8 is approximately as good as Fujifilm's best Holy Trinity standard zoom for just about half the price, while being substantially smaller and lighter. If I needed a standard Holy Trinity zoom in X-mount today, to my sorrow, actually, although let's be real, sorrow is a highly relative term here, the Sigma is probably the way I'd go. Although the Sigma's chromatic aberration annoys the crap out of me, and I know I'd miss the wider field of view of the 16 to 55. But against those two provisos, the fact remains that the Sigma delivers better than the 16 to 55 on the premises of a smaller than full frame sensor camera, a smaller, lighter, and less expensive camera system. Mounted to the XH2 we have in house, XF 16 to 55 2.8 tipped our kitchen scale at 46.7 ounces, making it three and a half ounces heavier than a full frame Panasonic S5 with a Sigma 28 to 72.8, just about four ounces heavier than our Sony A7 IV with Tamron. 28 to 75 2.8 G2, and a whopping three quarters of a pound heavier, that's about 350 grams, than the X-H2 with the Sigma 18 to 50 instead. Yet on balance, offers similar optical performance that just a few years ago, courtesy of the XF 16 to 55 2.8, was considered by many of us, including me, as good as it gets. The Sigma is thus an easy recommendation to make for the value and or carrying weight conscious among us. Although I think it's a shame Sigma doesn't yet offer an art version of this lens in X-mount because their outstanding 24-70 to 2.8 art lens in full-frame mount is notably sharper and better corrected than their full-frame 28-70. to But I get it. Were Sigma to offer it, the total package would probably diminish the validity of the argument that a smaller sensor means a smaller camera system. 
I think it fair to say that Fujifilm needs to update its 16 to 55 2.8 stat, bringing its relative performance, size, and weight in line with the company's latest 1.4 primes, exceeding the performance of the 18 to 50 handily, exceeding the performance of an art 16 to 55, which I imagine would be actually quite hard to do, basically matching the latest 24 to 70 2.8 full frame glass from Sony and Nikon in particular, because at the moment, they clearly stand above the latest from Canon and Panasonic. And yet, these facts also mean that for the most value conscious among us, and or those among us who recognize that they don't need 10 tenths image quality, or who prioritize the shooting experience, carrying weight, and or budget above 10 tenths image quality, there exists something tantamount to an arbitrage opportunity. It is possible now to add to or buy into the Fujifilm X-Mount ecosystem at even steeper discounts buying used, which of course is where KEH comes in. Thank you, KEH, for sponsoring this video. We're talking, for example, 700 bucks or less for a like new X-T2 compared to the $1,700 X-T5. The X-T2 was the camera that rekindled my love for photography back in 2017, or we're talking less than $500 for an excellent plus 23 millimeter 1.4 R instead of ponying up $900 for the 23 1.4 RLMWR. Not quite as sweet, but we're also talking about $800 for an XF16 to 55 2.8 in excellent condition rather than $1,100 for a new one. Instead of pocketing savings like these, one could instead then apply the difference toward the acquisition of one of the latest high performance lenses Fujifilm has created too, like their sterling 1823 and 33 mm 1.4s, which just happened to cost almost exactly the difference between that X-T2 and a new X-T5, just saying, or Fujifilm's truly unbeatable at the price and weight, XF150-600 f5.62 f8, the full frame equivalent of a 225 to 900 millimeter made even longer when attached to a 40 megapixel X-T5 or X-H2, just saying again. Although that lens on that camera, oh baby. But that's another video for another time. A big shout out to KEH for sponsoring this video. A great resource for finding just this kind of gear. Check them out using the special links and 5% discount or bonus code in the video description below. Thank you, KEH. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, join the conversation in the comments section below because this is an exceptional audience. If you'd like help with a portfolio review, gear selection, finding or honing your artistic voice, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one mentoring video called Via Zoom at 3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, please consider supporting our work by using the no cost to you affiliate links down below, sending us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially joining us on Patreon links down below as well. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.